Thank you for chairperson for kind introduction. And uh, uh, outside, I would like to thank to Dr. Bansi Sahib sir, Dr. Rotul Gopani, and organizing committee for giving me opportunity to be part of the PSD meet. And today, I am going to say about the initiation of insulin and titration in the management of the hyperglycemia in pregnancy. See, we all know hyperglycemia pregnancy is going to include the two part. One is a true GDM, and second one is a pre GDM. True GDM means we are all knowing, and uh, pre GDM means the patient is going to having a might be having a type 1 diabetes as well as the type 2 diabetes. See, these are today's my agenda of presentation. First, I am going to discuss about the the, what is the role of insulin in pregnancy? After that, I am going to say about the, which are the insulin could be safer in the pregnancy. Uh, and uh, you know, what are the guidelines for that as far as the insulin initiation as well as the practicing is there. And thoroughly then I am going to discuss about the how we can manage the hyperglycemia pregnancy throughout the phase of the journey. Antipartum, intrapartum as well as postpartum. And then I am going to summarize the some of the my slides are going to be repeating, so I am going to try to cover the main topic of today's my presentation. See, we all know, as far as the diabetes pregnancy management concern, there are the four things, there are four cornerstones, MNT, exercise, and in certain situations, all of the OHA, like metformin or SU, and insulin. So today, I am going to say about the insulin. See, we all know, insulin is to be a preferable agent as far as the diabetes pregnancy is concerned. It is very safe, it is not going to cross the placenta, against therapy to individualize. And we all know, um, also it was discussed by the previous speakers, if you are going to use either the um, multipartial insulin or insulin pump, they are basic, they have not shown the superiority in terms of the glycemic control. And we all know, all the human insulin, again pH and regular, both are safe in pregnancy. And now what is also, we are knowing, as part of the analogous concern, short acting insulin as part, as well as Lispro, they are going to approve, we can use in pregnancy. There will be a lack of data for blue lysine. And insulin determinant, we all know, this is going to approve for the pregnancy. And now we are also getting some of the data for the glargin as well as the deglodide. Now, we all know many women of the GDM, they are having the isolated elevation of the post-milk glycemic excursion. In such case, might be single sort of the parallel insulin to be required for getting to take them, make them their post-milk glucose control very well. And those in the pre-GDM, like type 1 and type 2, they most of the time they require the basal bolus therapy. But our DIPSI, they have also given recommendation, we can use premix insulin in limited case setting when there is an intensive basal bolus therapy is not to be suffice. Now, I would like to present no from you, sometimes we are getting confusion. But, uh, all the patients of GDM, they require insulin? No. There are certain factors which you going to predict the need for insulin in GDM. And uh, suppose somebody even get like high fasting sugar more than 110 milligram, PPG more than 140, those who are going to come to know early GDM, less than 20 weeks, past history of GDM patients, older age people, higher the A1C, and those having an elevated BMI. Some type of group, maybe they require the insulin on top of MNT as well as physical activity for better glycemic control. And those having a better oxygen history, like some of the patients having a history of the current anomalies in the past pregnancy, hydroamnesis, preeclampsia, hypertension, as well as the metal filter distress, they may be required insulin for better glycemic control for throughout the course of journey. See now, we all know there are a lot of insulin options to be saved during pregnancy and it is going to describe by previous speaker. But I would like to say something here, that we know the human regular insulin and pH previously we are using. Now we have availability of the analog insulin. But as compared to regular insulin, if you can see here, the analog insulin, they are in terms of better because they are being an early onset of the action. The uh, effect going to start within 15 minutes, peak effect at the end of the one hour, and duration is going to remain for two hours. So, particularly the I mean, GDM patients, we require the postmill hyperglycemic control in a proper way for the first hour as well as for the second hour. So, here, if you are going to take the opportunity to use setup insulin, so we can provide the better glycemic control. We all know the, about the NPH as well as DTMA PKPD. DTMA is a bit flatter insulin. Normally, patient is going to require either once in a day or very few situations they require twice in a day also. Nowadays, what the guidance is going to be said? See, we all know if you are going to see all the guidelines like ACOG, IDF, NICE, or DIPC, but you can see here they have given the approval for the all replicated insulin analogs as well as for DTMA. Okay, this could be insulin to be found very safe and very effective. We can achieve the PPG control value during the pregnancy very well. But the DIPC, they will make it a one comment for our human insulin. Ideally, to be a uh, human insulin could be a very good because it is less immunogenic. 
But over and above, you can see all the international as well as the national society, they are going to favor. You can use reprint to insulin logs for better PPG control. Now, is there any data to support this statement? Yes. You can see this slide, you can come to know. When they have done the comparison versus analog versus human insulin, they have observed it is going to take care of the PPG better as compared to insulin. And similar way, the risk of the hypoglycemia is going to be lesser in the analog insulin as compared to the uh, uh, human regular insulin. Now, we all know these are the basal insulin available in the practice NPH, glargine U100 as well as 300, Datimid, and the Diglutec. Is there any data for the Datimid as well as Diglutec and glargine? Yes, you can see here. As far as the Datimid is concerned, this to be a very safer and approval basal insulin as far as the choice of the GDA when you are going to require the fasting plasma support in a better way. And when they have done the comparison with the Datimid, they have observed as far as the ANC is concerned, both the insulin, either are going to use the Datimid or NPH, the glycemic control is almost at par. Means there is a no, uh, there will be non inferiority But you can see here, when they have done comparison with the NPH insulin in Datimid, the fasting plasma support was a little bit better throughout the basically course of the journey as compared to NPH insulin. Now, is there any data or the studies for the glargin insulin? No. The glargin insulin basically, you can see there will be some of the case events and study report is there. There is no any randomized control trial for glargin insulin till today. You can use the glargin insulin, particularly those having like pre-existing type 2 diabetes and type 1 diabetes. If they are already taking, you can continue. But, uh, the data is going to show there are some of the observational studies was there and they will uh, find out the reason. There will be no any associated risk factor as far as the uh, neonatal as well as metal outcome is concerned. But cones and prones we have to discuss thoroughly with our patients. Now Diglutec recently, uh, this year in January, we are going to get the approval. If you are going to take the patient is going to require Diglutec as far as for basal insulin, you can continue. And there will be a, also one expect study was done. Then they have done comparison of insulin diglutec versus indutimate in type 1 diabetes patients or in comparison with insulin as part. And they have observed as far as the pregnant woman type 1 diabetes is concerned, the diglutec was found to be non-inferior as compared to Datimid. And it was a randomized control trial and data was published in Lantus Journal February 23. Now something of premix insulin. Here is the only one pilot study. It was the first RCT was done in the GDM patient in our country. And when they have done comparison between the human premix versus analog premix, and they observe you can use this human premix also or analog premix if you are going to take. Now, something on infusion pump. We all know the insulin pump was discovered by previous speaker, so I am not going to go into detail about that. But there are some benefits if you are going to use the insulin pump because it's going to help to address the daytime as well as the nocturnal hypoglycemia and when patient is suffering from prominent dawn phenomena. There are some disadvantages. Because it is a little bit costly, the complexity of the is going to be there. They require a lot of counseling and training program. And sometimes there will be some error or some influenza problem and the pump failure is going to be there. And data also observe either you are using the MDI or you are using insulin form, there will be no any basic difference in terms of the efficacy. Now recently, DPC 2023, they have published the guidelines how to diagnose and manage the GDM patients. See, we all know. Whenever basically GDM patient is going to first time diagnose in early pregnancy, our main concern is to be that we are going to offer MNT and physical activity. But what they are going to say, if after two weeks of extensive MNT and physical activity, if your 2 over BPG is not going to remain less than 120, then definitely we have to take a call for the pharmacotherapy. And here, insulin could be a preferable agent. If patient is not willing for insulin or if there is any absolute contraindication, then you can consider metformin in some type of case. But we, again, we have to explain the cons and pros because of some basically the IVGR effect in later part. Now, second thing also they have mentioned when patient is going to come in the third trimester, like within 24 or 26 weeks through GDM patients. So ideally, you can offer MNT only for one week. And after one week, if MNT is not going to be uh, maintained with the sugar in proper way, then definitely we have to take a call for insulin. And when we have to start insulin immediately, we have not to wait a single point. When the fasting sugar is more than 126, and when two or two is more than 200, we have to start the insulin immediately. Now, this graph is was discovered by previous speaker, so I am not going to go in detail. What is going to happen? The oral insulin basically stand in our basically uh, non-pregnant diabetic patients. What the dosing should be required? Ideal to be basal bolus regen, 
those to be titrated on base of SMBG and they have given the clinical recuperation as far as the weak and tablets is concerned. Suppose somebody is going to having a diagnosis between 9 to 16 weeks and what is going to happen? There will be a reduction in insulin dose which increases insulin sensitivity to about the hypoglycemia. Now what will be going to be happen between 16 to 36 weeks? There will be gradually increasing insulin resistance level. So some of the patients they require the increments of the dose of the insulin 5% per day. So this is not true for all patients. Again, as per the insulin sensitivity, resistance and the glycemic train, patient might be going to require the different doses. Now they also put a one note that the obese patient <coughs> may require the higher insulin doses than non obese patients. And particularly in post delivery phase, majority of the time there will be rejection of 20 to 40 percent of the insulin doses. Now, this is the one important slides as a physician and obstetrician, basically, gynecologist friends, we have to come understand. What they have given the recommendation as on the uh, week basis, total daily dose of the insulin requirement. It is not going for true for basically all the people, but just they have given the recommendation. Suppose somebody in early, like uh, before three months, from beginning to the 12 weeks, so there will be total daily dose requirement 0.7 unit per kg body weight is there. As soon as the week of pregnancy will be increasing, there will be a gradual incremental in dose of the insulin. But what is going to happen at the 38 weeks, you can see the total daily dose requirement say about 1 unit per kg body weight. But this is not proper for the true GDM patients. Those having a pre existing type 1 and type 2 patients, maybe they require some type of the higher doses. Let me give one example. Suppose somebody having a weight is 60 kg, they are going to come in the basically for, uh, in the after conceiving. So you can see this formula calculation. The so 0.7 multiplied by 6 means around about 42 units. So it doesn't mean the patient is required the 20 unit basal and 20 units cardiac. You can consider even like to start with the low dose. 0.1 to 0.2 per kg body weight, you can see the things, how the glycemic profile is going to be there, and then you can up titrate or down titrate the dose of the insulin as per the glycemic load. We all know, as far as glycemic goal is concerned, when you are going to treat hypoglycemic pregnancy, the fasting sugar, we have to keep below 90, post meal sugar, particularly 2 hours sugar, below 120, and post meal 1 hour sugar, below 140, without the risk of the hypoglycemia. And here, also they have put a specific note for the type 1 diabetic patients, between 10 to 14 weeks gestation, usually patients of type 1, they are going to undergo the insulin sensitivity. So most of the time, insulin dose may be uh, going to be required lesser during those periods. Now, here clear that we all know, whenever after MNT exercise, if your fasting is going to remain persistent more than 95, 1 over more than 140, and 2 over more than 120, then definitely we have to knock the door of the insulin. Without insulin, they cannot able to provide a better glycemic control. And when you are going to struggling with the both, like fasting and PPG both, then usually patient is going to require the multiple injection in form of intermediate as well as solid We can call it a basal bolus therapy. And if there is a only isolated abnormal value at particular specific time in post meal, like post breakfast, post lunch, and post dinner, so you can focus on specific on that time also. Means all patients they no require sometimes basal bolus. You can't with the basal plus plus also. Regardless of starting dose, subsequent dose adjustments to be mandatory on base of the blood glucose level at a particular time of the day. And there will be uh, no any conclusive evidence still today for the threshold value at what time which clinician should start the <coughs> medical therapy. Now this is our initiation of antibiotic phase. Our duty is not going to be basically end here. Actually our duty as a clinician is going to start because the titration is very important thing. And here they have given the recommendation how can titrate the basal and bolus insulin as per your basically fasting and PPG value. Suppose somebody in the fasting hypoglycemia, so here basically they have given the formula how can you titrate basal of insulin. Like fasting sugar below 70, then you can down it like 2 units and as soon as sugar is going to increase, you can up it as per the mention in the table. But our main goal, we have to maintain fasting sugar between 71 to 95. Similar way, they have also given the recommendation for the bolus insulin. Like suppose patient having a 2 over PPG sugar, if your target is by between 100 to 120 after 2 over, so our main goal, we have to keep the PPG sugar after 2 over is between 100 to 120. If lesser than, then you can down it. If upper, then you can up it. But again, it's to be individualized. All patients, they are not going to feed for some type of basically the higher dose. You can even tighten the dose with the minimal incremental or decremental dose of insulin. Now, this is about all about the antipartum. Now, next few five minutes, I am going to say about intrapartum management as well as postpartum management. Now, what is going to happen in intrapartum glucose management? Usually, insulin requirement is going to reduce significantly during the active labor because the hepatic glucose is going to begin decreasing. And whatever ACOG and is they have given the basically the average recommendation, you can keep between 70 to 120 milligram during this labor phase. 
whenever maternal blood glucose is going to remain more than 180, definitely it will go into a higher SOD for the neonatal hypoglycemia. So, depending on glycemic status, you can basically consider insulin. Normally, what ideally we have to do as a clinician, suppose somebody with pre existing type 1 and type 2 diabetes or patient on basal glucose therapy, usually basically the nighttime dose of NPH or the basal insulin, whatever patient is good take, we have to continue. The time uh, delivery basically timing, particularly we are going to preferably to keep in the morning time. Mode of delivery, as a diabetologist, we are not going to say that all patients they require the C-section. Depending upon the option site, they can prefer either they can go for normal labor or the C-section. Early morning prandial shot should be discontinued and you have to check fasting sugar. Suppose the fasting sugar less than 70, then you can start the GI drip at 80 to 100 ml per hour. And if fasting sugar between 7, 7 to 90, we have not to give the insulin. If 90 to 120, you can give the basically two units plus normal saline. 120, 140, 4 units and gradually accordingly you can start it. During this interpartum phase, every one of the sugar monitoring should be required. We have just to see the patient is not going to develop the hypoglycemia. If suppose somebody in the facility of the infusion pump, they can give also basically the infusion as a 0.5 to 1, uh, 0.5 to 1 unit per hour. And suppose if the facility is not available, then you can go for even subcutaneous scale and you can monitor 4 to 6 only. Now, what is going to happen in true GDM patients? Most of the time after delivery is going to them, Within two to three days, insulin required is going to become minimized. Patients, they don't require insulin. Suppose somebody will get pre-GDM, like type 1, so we have to switch over the basal bolus dose, what patient is going to receive previously. Again, monitoring should be done, and according to the and optatory dose. And suppose somebody will get like type 2 diabetes, only MAM and SARS go and spoken about the, all the drugs and insulin. Usually, the recommendation, we have to continue insulin during those period, latin phase, but very few people, they are going to ready for it. So, you can consider metformin, or even AGI, even basically SU, there are no any strong data available could be there, but we can continue during those period. Only thing certain basically side effect and the uh, risk of the hypoglycemia we have to discuss with the patients. Now, what we have to do for postpartum management and what our ECUG they are going to make in the statement. See, ultimately the after date of delivery of the baby, at the end of six weeks, patient has to be gone for again for posting for 75 OGTT. I am going to request my all my gynec friends. Please basically once delivery is going to be there, their patients or uh, mom is going to be busy to take care of their child. They are going to forget that they have basically the disguise in pregnancy and they are not going for do the screening. So it's my humble request. We are always going to say our basically <coughs> patients as well as gynec colleagues, they just ask them first to do at least basic 75 OTT at the end of the six weeks of the date of delivery. And by this way, we can come to know what is the current glycemic status. If suppose patient has a fasting more than 125 and 2 over PPG more than 199, then the patient is going to level with diabetes. They require the proper treatment under guidance of the diabetes or treating physician. So we are running up time. Just two minutes. Uh, suppose somebody is like IGT range or IMG pre-diabetic range, like fasting between 100 to 125 and 2 over PPG between 140 to 199, you can physically label these pre-diabetic patients. They require the proper counseling. Metformin and AGI you can consider during this period and proper lifestyle modification if patient will go based, then they require a weight loss. Suppose like fasting sugar less than 100 and 2 over PPG less than 140, you can put everything like patient is now euglycemic, but every yearly they require screening because studies they have shown after 10 years, they all GD patients, they are going to be risk of the future diabetes. So every yearly, they require the basically the at least glycemic assessment for just going to know their status. Now this is the glycemic target. We all know the, all the guidelines basically they have just basically make it the comment. The fasting sugar we have to keep below 95, 1 hour PPG below 140, and 2 hour PPG below 120. Look at A1C almost basically case and uh, nice, they are going to favor A1C less than 6.5, but AD and ACOG they are also going to favor you can target below 6 also. Now there are a few sentences for the lactating, basically uh, lactation part, breastfeeding. WHO they give a recommendation, exclusive breastfeeding is mandatory for the first six month life because there are the short term and long term benefit for infants and mother both because the infant is going to have a less risk of the childhood obesity and the mother also going to have a benefit in terms of the lower maternal body weight. There are certain things we have to keep in mind, particularly suppose somebody in type 1 diabetes patients, so we have to reduce the night time basal insulin to prevent the risk of the hypoglycemia and it is always to be advised to small snack before the feeding to avoid the hypoglycemia. Adequate hydration is to be mandatory and we have to promote the early risk of breastfeeding because it will reduce the risk of the neonatal hypoglycemia. Now this about all about it, I will touch upon the antipartum, interpartum and postpartum and now just I am going to summarize my talk. We all know day in day out incidence of children is going to increasing. 
because overweight and obese women they will increase of the developing gut the, uh, the gdm in the future if two or ppg is remain more than 120 after mnt then medical management particularly insulin therapy to be started as per the guidelines proper medical management before during and after pregnancy they are the key role to prevent the vicious cycle which is going to contribute to obesity insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes not only mother but for that reason also and here they observe as far as the number of hypoglycemic episodes which are very lower they have found in when patient is going to use <laughs> insulin lispro and aspirin and they also observe there will be no any excessive risk as far as the adverse fetal and maternal outcome is going to be there if you are going to use rapid acting insulin during the pregnancy with this regards to long acting insulin analogs there are very few available studies to make the equivalence of them that's why still we require a large prospective and randomized control trial for going to back making the more very strong recuperation as far as for the insulin analogs concerned with this i would like to basically thank you for keeping patient to listening here thank you